Hi folks. So over the past couple of days I finally got a hot foil process working and just thought I'd share with you some of the results. So what exactly is uh, hot foiling? It's where you have a, a patterned metal die such as this. The die is heated and pressed against a transfer foil or film. This is a thin plastic sheet which contains a, a layer of pigment. In this case it's gold. Uh, I've also got some gloss black here. That's placed on top of a substrate that you want to print on and any areas that are in contact with the pattern dye the pigment melts and sticks to the substrate. So this will work on to many different substrates. My main aim was uh, polypropylene because that's what I'm working on at the moment but I've been practicing on this is just glossy paper, back of a booklet and it will even go on to uh, hard acrylic. This is quite tricky because the, the dye needs to be perfectly parallel to the surface. So this dye is actually just a, an old jewellery casting out of Dad's scrap box. Uh, I machined it down. Normally these dyes are produced in magnesium by a photo etching process. And this is one I got made up by a great company called Magnetic Elephant. Check them out. Great service. Uh, this was about £20 total. And if I can zoom in, you should be able to see there's really excellent depth of etch on this. The original sheet was, I think, 4mm thick, and the etch to looks like maybe millimeter and a half. So, this is a logo for a product I'm working on at the moment. I haven't actually tried this dye yet, but later on in the video we might see if it, if it works. So, there are plenty of hot foil, manual hot foil machines around, and here is one of them, or here was one of them. It's a little Chinese machine we got off eBay a couple of years back. And it had a, a heated platen and a, a lever action mechanism. Unfortunately the thing was so poorly built that the, the entire column would bend backwards when you applied pressure to the arm, causing the, the die to tip and not give you a flat impression. Uh, also, the temperature control was absolutely diabolical. It's a, a mechanical thermostat and it varied by about 20 to 30 degrees uh, as it tripped off and on. Fortunately, however, I've got this little Blue Arbor press. Got it a couple of months ago for doing some crimping work. And I've modified it to accept the heated platen from the, the cheap machine and the little slide out uh, table as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So, looking at the heated platen first, there's a. Here we go. Uh, there's a thick aluminium block here. Inside it, there's a 100 watt ceramic heating element. Power connections out the back there. It is attached to the end of the, the ram. These are just spacers. The end of the ram via a metal plate here. And these four screws at the corners let you tip and adjust the, the entire heating element and plate so you get a flat, flat impression on the substrate. Um, the die, in this case, I've glued the die to the aluminium block here uh, using Loctite, which is good up to maybe 180 degrees or so. You can also get double-sided tape. Um, I just use Loctite because I had it in hand. So the die slides in there, tighten up them. The base is has this neat little slide out table so you can reposition stuff accurately every time. In addition to the adjustment on the 
heated die, I also made a block, really thick block, inch thick acrylic, with four little adjustment screws. You can see that. Uh, I actually made this when I was still working on the cheap machine in an attempt to get a flat impression, but I thought I'd just use it use it here. So that sits onto there. I use a, a metal thin metal plate just to spread the heat, otherwise the acrylic would melt as well. Um, what do we have? Yeah, temperature control. I'm using one of my little temperature control units, the IJ6. It is sensing the temperature thermocouple, the temperature of the actual block to which the die is attached. Uh, initially I was measuring the, the heating block temperature but it's about five degrees different so you're better measuring the actual die temperature. Um, earth connection here going to the sensor because the, there's a little bit of difference in earth potential between the uh, the USB controller and the, the actual machine. Um, the temperature controller, the solid state relay out, trigger output from it goes to this little box which is nothing more than a twin gang socket with a solid state relay inside to switch the power off and on. And all of this is controlled by my software on the computer. It's not doing anything at the moment, but uh, we'll, we'll crank it up and get it get it heating. So the machine's heated up. Here's the temperature shooting up and reaching the set point. Uh, this will actually hold it within 0.1 of a degree, which is obviously way overkill, but uh, it doesn't hurt. So to check if the die is actually level with the substrate, uh, I found the best way is to just take a piece of blank material, give it a quick oops, make sure it doesn't stick to it, and if you can see a slightly melted impression over the whole surface as you do there, then that means the die is perfectly flat on the substrate. If it isn't, then you can adjust the screws here to, to bring it into flatness. So let's give it a shot at actually stamping. Okay, let's try a stamping. So we've got some red polypropylene plastic here. Set that on top of the metal plate. We've got some gloss black foil here from Philips Foils Limited root range of foils. This is designed specifically for polypropylene. Place the foil on top of the plastic, shove it into the press, and a quick down and up. That's all it requires, you don't need a lot of time. And we'll peel the foil off when it's still hot. Lo and behold, you have a perfect, come on focus, perfect transfer. Pretty neat, huh? Let's try that again on some, oh, let's say yellow. On top, there we go. Down, up. Peel off. There's a transfer. If you press too hard, um, you can get some extra transfer around the edges of the die, but that's just a matter of feel. So that works pretty neat. It's a very quick process. Um, one improvement that could still be made to this machine, the the old one had an automatic sheet feeder, uh, roll feeder, sorry, so the, the full roll goes on the back here, it gets led along under the die and onto this take-up spool, and every time you cycle the machine, the take-up spool turns 
a certain amount to feed fresh film through. It's adjustable on the side here. So that would be an improvement, but it's, it's no big deal to cut off pieces of film. I've put the magnesium dye on and we'll try some gold foil onto paper. Putting two sheets down to give it a little bit of padding. Here we go. Press down. And... <laughs> How's that? Pretty neat, huh? Even the little R at the end has come out, which I wasn't expecting it to.